Last time in the last video, you saw there was maybe a little part after the wind speed and direction that we hadn't talked about yet. And that is when the wind is varying in direction. So they are going to code the wind as being variable if the wind was six knots or less during the previous two minute evaluation period. So we still have that two minute evaluation period that we're looking at. Sometimes we can see it coded as VRB05. Okay, so that would be it's variable at five. It could be just coded VRB and that's just generic for the speed is six knots or less. But during the previous two minute evaluation period, then there really wasn't a definite direction that the wind was coming from. If the wind speed is found in the last two minute evaluation period to be seven knots or greater, and the direction is varying by more than 60 degrees, so we have some wind that causing the direction to move around, then we can use this little abbreviation after our normal wind group. So how I would read this would be that the wind is from 250 degrees true, 10 gusting 26 and the direction variable between 220 degrees true and 280 degrees true. So that is going to follow that normal wind group if we have that seven knots of wind or more and it's varying by 60 degrees or more during that two minute evaluation period. So be able to read these variable direction information that we also get. So the next portion of our METAR that we're going to see is the visibility. So would a machine's placement matter in the view of the airport in terms of seeing the visibility of the whole airport? Well, let's talk about what we mean by prevailing visibility. So the definition of prevailing visibility is the greatest distance that can be seen throughout at least half of the horizon circle, not necessarily continuous. So as an example, I'm going to have a good picture here on the next slide what we're talking about, but prevailing visibility is the greatest distance that can be seen throughout at least half of the horizon circle. So what do we mean by horizon circle? If I stood on a nice open plane and I'm looking around, turning my body around, I'm looking at the horizon, that's the horizon circle. So the greatest distance that can be seen throughout at least half of that horizon circle, not necessarily continuous. Now, how about this picture right here? If we had on the end of this runway, if we had a little station that was recording our visibility and it was looking around and it was looking toward my camera, it looks like I'm on final approach, it was looking this direction, it's looking this direction, it's looking out that direction, it's looking all these different directions, it sees pretty good visibility. It might report that as 10 miles or something like that. Because we have over half of my horizon circle is nice good visibility. But what about in this part of my horizon circle? If my sensor looks out this direction, oh, it's going to run into this, this area of fog, or it looks like ground fog to me. It's sitting there looking at that going, oh, okay, but it's not going to report that as a restriction of visibility if it's an automated weather system and it's not being corrected by humans. Now, from this report, we actually see it is an automated system. So you have to take this visibility if it's an automated system with a bit of a grain of salt here. So half the horizon circle in this picture could easily be seven miles, but the rest is totally not. We have ground fog involved here and we have to be careful of that when we're using fully automated systems. So the sensor visibility, like I mentioned, it really matters where it's looking. For a manual observation, it's going to take prevailing visibility, the greatest visibility, at least half of the horizon, and again, not necessarily continuous. So I have a picture coming on the next slide to give you more of an overhead view of what we're talking about, but it's the greatest visibility that it can see, a person can see of at least half the horizon, not necessarily continuous. If 
the visibility is less than seven statute miles. Visibility on METARs is reported in statute miles. And this, if it's ever going to be less, if it's reported less than seven miles, they're going to actually include a reason. And the reason codes we're going to be getting to in a future video. If it's less than, so for example, sometimes you might see M1 slash 4 SM. That means the visibility is less than one quarter statute mile. And I just remember M, what it reminds me of is minus. So if I wrote this, I could write minus one four statute mile. And that tells me it's less than a quarter statute mile. We might also see this as M3 slash eight statute mile, meaning the visibility is less than three eighths of statute mile. Now, looking at that horizon circle. So here is a view over East Tex Regional Airport. And we're actually looking out of a circle around the airport. And we have at least half of this circle has good visibility. Okay, so here's a quarter, perfect. Okay, fine. We have over a quarter down here that's good visibility. We have about a quarter over here that's also good visibility. So we've got good enough wedges here of my horizon circle with good visibility. But it's not continuous, not necessarily continuous. We've got some low clouds that are sitting over the end of our longer runway right here. We've got some other low clouds that are impacting our operation over here. So this is sometimes going to be, so again, this can be reported as the prevailing visibility of whatever they can see going out this direction. And when they take these observations, they do it from the tower, which is located out here at the airport at East Tex Regional. And they have certain things that they know how far away that thing is. And if they can see that thing, then that's how far the visibility is. They call them visibility markers. So, and I've been flying when this type of thing is going on in the traffic pattern. And the issue becomes, yes, maybe the visibility is getting reported as six, seven, eight miles. It's fine. But what happens if I'm in the traffic pattern for this runway, for example, and I'm taking off here, what happens is I end up with problems as I try to run my traffic pattern because on either end we have this cloud issue and it doesn't really make for good VFR weather flying really very difficult to maintain visual contact with the airport if you have clouds, rain, fog sitting over parts. Now, if the station has what's called runway visual range or RVR. So RVR stands for runway visual range. If our station has runway visual range equipment and the prevailing visibility at the airport is one statute mile or less, that's 6,000 feet, equivalent is one statute mile. If we have that equipment and prevailing visibility is less than one statute mile, then, and we have um, an RVR on, or sorry, and or, we should say, if the RVR for our instrument runway at Longview, the instrument runway is considered to be runway one three, if it's 6,000 feet or less, then they're going to report the RVR. So basically, if our visibility is less than one statute mile or 6,000 feet on our instrument runway, that would be the runway that people generally are doing instrument approaches, and we have an RVR sensor, then they will report RVR in our report. Otherwise, they're not going to report RVR. And RVR, again, stands for runway visual range. What does a runway visual range actually do? Well, what it does is it's a sensor that records how far it can see down the runway based on light reflecting within the instrument. This is a picture of a couple different types of systems. Um, older types sometimes looked for an actual light that was sitting off the runway and it would have a little sensor that would look for it. Newer systems, I'm going to zoom in on this one, they will flash a light out of one of these boxes and the other box is going to receive that light and if it can see the light then it can figure out its distance. So this is a more modern type of RVR sensor. 
you can have up to four of these on a runway. The airport where I live, East Texas Regional, we only have one. Long runways like Denver International, they have four RVR sensors on their runways. It's very long runways there. So how do we read this information? Here is an example of one. Okay, so let's read it in parts. We have our runway visual range. So notice first our prevailing visibility is definitely less than a mile. It's reported as one half statue mile. Runway four has a runway visual range of 4,500 feet, V for variable, with 6,000 feet. And then we have a P right here. What does that P mean? The P means it's greater than 6,000 feet. And I just think of P for plus. So that is what's going on. We have runway 04, 4,500 feet RVR, variable to greater than 6,000 feet RVR. And they also have coded because we have a visibility restriction and the visibility is less than seven miles. We have a restriction code and FG stands for fog. We haven't talked about the codes yet, but we'll get to that. So P is greater than, M is less than for the RVR as well. So P for plus, M for minus. That's how I remember that. An example of M might be something like this, R13 slash M0600 feet. And what that means, hopefully you can read my bad writing, on runway 13, the RVR is less than 600 feet. 